I knew that I carried a gene um, that meant I was more likely to get breast cancer. It's called the BRCA2 gene. I had an MRI and they actually discovered a one centimetre tumour. Jess Broad was just 30 when she was diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer. She needed urgent treatment to stop it spreading. I initially started with a lumpectomy. That was followed by uh, four months of chemotherapy. Then I had a few weeks to recover before having a double mastectomy. Jess chose to use her private health insurance for the treatment. She was paying $55 a fortnight for mid-level hospital cover. So this is all the medical, um, you know, bills and receipts basically from my treatment. Um, and Jess was shocked when her insurer refused to pay for her breast reconstruction, arguing it was a cosmetic procedure. Um, so this was basically a breast reconstruction following a mastectomy. So, I mean, that doesn't sound like it's a, it's not no, a cosmetic procedure. No, nobody would choose to have that, trust mm. me. And then what was the amount that they were refusing to pay? So that was $8,652. So it's basically just like... Her insurance company eventually paid for the breast reconstruction, but the operations and procedures left her considerably out of pocket. I ended up, for my three surgeries, it was about $7,000 of out-of-pocket costs. Did you have the money to pay for that gap? No, I absolutely didn't. I had to rely on my parents. An increasing number of Australians are choosing to opt out of private health insurance. The latest figures show that 64,000 people dropped their private hospital cover last year. People are walking, people are saying, it's not for me anymore. And also, at the same time, they're actually dropping the level of cover. Those who are staying in are actually dropping the level of cover. And so this is, is bad for the insurance industry. It's not there as a savings plan. You shouldn't be thinking about how much I put in versus how much I get out. It's there to protect you in the event of, as I say, misadventure or serious disease or accident. <laughs> Josh is amazing. So he has diagnoses of cerebral palsy and epilepsy and autism. When Josh Catterick was just four months old, his mum took him to hospital, worried that something was wrong. It turned out that he'd been born with a brain tumour. Within 12 hours of taking him up to the hospital, he was in critical condition. The Catterick's had private health insurance with NIB, but they found it wasn't much help when they needed it most. They were a nightmare. We didn't go private when Josh was first transferred to Ramwick. We just went through the public system. But when he transferred back to Canberra Hospital, we tried to go private in a public hospital um, and they denied our claim straight up. Why did they do that? Uh, because we hadn't specified neurosurgery on our policy. I think we had mid-level hospital cover at the time, assuming that it would cover most things. Um, and, I mean, who thinks about neurosurgery for a four-month-old? The Catterick's now spend $30 a fortnight for extras cover with HCF, which helps pay for the dentist and glasses. They no longer have private hospital cover. It didn't make sense to keep spending money on something we couldn't use. Well, I could round up literally hundreds of people, sadly, who have had very good care in the private system as well. So it's reassuring to know that she can get good care in the public system. It means, she, as a consumer, she has a choice. Mark Fitzgibbon is a managing director of NIB, Kylie Catterick's previous health insurer. As an insurer, is your first priority to your customers or to your shareholders? It is absolutely to our members. We exist to pay claims. We exist to keep people healthy. And we believe if we do a good job at that, which I'd like to think we do, the commercial results will follow. We're all individuals. NIB is Australia's fourth largest health insurer. NIB's new range of health cover lets you tailor your cover with the things that are important to you. Mr Fitzgibbon made headlines last week when he argued that Australia would be better off if Medicare was replaced with compulsory private health insurance. Now, my idea is I should be able to opt out 
of Medicare, take the pressure off, off the public system and taxation as a funding mechanism and take care of my own lifetime health care costs. You know, I, I believe I should have that option. And I think inevitably that Medicare as a, an insurance scheme is, is, is retained for the vulnerable and those who would otherwise not be able to uh, take out um, appropriate levels of, of cover. I think one of the reasons that Mark Fitzgibbon is advancing that proposal is he's a private insurer. He makes money from this product. His share price, he's concerned about his share price. So his proposal is purely self-interest. Medibank represents the biggest change in a social policy. 16. Before the Whitlam government launched Medibank in 1975, nearly 80% of Australians had private hospital cover. But after the introduction of Medibank and then a decade later, Medicare, coverage began to fall. By the late 1990s, just 30% had private health insurance. The Howard government introduced a 30% rebate to try to lift the rate of coverage. Since then, both Labor and Coalition governments have subsidised insurance premiums. Last year it cost $6 billion. But the percentage of the population that's insured has flatlined, and now it's starting to fall again. It's ludicrous to say the response to people walking from private health insurance is to force them back again. Health insurance is ultimately um, a discretionary spend. Um, you know, we're like a bottled water company. We compete with a, this great free alternative out of the tap called Medicare. So why would people bother buying bottled water if they can get free tap water? Because for many people it's a better option. Jess Broad complained to the private health insurance ombudsman about the treatment she received from her fund. She's not planning to opt out of private health, but she says she's learned a lot about dealing with insurers. I think it's really important that people push back on their health fund and don't just accept the letters they send you or um, you know the emails as the truth because it really isn't and you need to be assertive you know push back on them if you don't think it's right. You're never fully covered um, but people don't realise that until they go to use it. You're suffer suffering from emotional turmoil and they prey on it. That's how it felt. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.